Hi everyone. So in this tutorial here, we're going to be looking at how do we use a diagram balance. So in front of us here is our scale. Whatever object that you try to weigh, you're going to put it on the left-hand side here. There's a pan that you can be uh, detaching and uh, picking up whatever masses that you want. Uh, there's a lever arm here. Uh, you notice that it's horizontal right now. It rocks back and forth. The idea is you're going to weigh down this lever arm here on the left-hand side here, and we're going to try to counterbalance on the right-hand side where it is already scaled for us here. So starting on the really back side of this lever arm here, we see that the very back beam actually goes up in increments of 100 grams. So if we're thinking the object that we're weighing is actually more than 100, you might need to use this back beam. The beam right in front of that goes up in increments of 10. And then what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the ones place as well as some of the decimal places using this wheel here. So uh, first thing you want to do, uh, actually even before you put down your objects, is you want to make sure that the lever arm here is calibrated. Uh, this moving arm here has this line. You do want to make sure that this line here is lined up with this zero mark uh, sticker on the right hand side here. If it isn't lined up here to a very small extent, you can dial this metal knob here, dial it one way, see what happens to it. If it's closer to the mark, farther away from the mark here, oh, now I'm a little bit too low. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Um, all these diagram scales here are calibrated for their own pan, so make sure not to accidentally mix these up with other diagram scales. You know that the scale is calibrated when, again, the lever arm's line is directly across from the um, zero mark uh, on the right-hand side. So at this point here, I've calibrated my scale here. We'll start off by measuring just the mass of a beaker. So right now everything is flat. I'm going to put the beaker here on. Uh, it's going to definitely knock the left-hand side down because it's uh, very heavy. I'm going to start off here with a really back um, beam here. I'm going to see whether it's 100 grams or not here. I notice when I dial this to 100 grams, I notice that the lever arm has actually toppled the other way, which means that this beaker here is not quite 100 grams here. Sometimes people like, uh, I know it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 100, they like uh, just going, oh, maybe it's like halfway there or whatnot. In general, if I need those 10 gram increments here, I'd actually use uh, the second beam here. So if I know it's not quite 100, let's dial that back down to 0 and then slowly use the second beam here. Is it 10 grams? Nope, not heavy enough here. 20, 30, I can actually get those in-betweens using the second beam here. So I notice between 40 and 50, 50 is getting pretty close. I'm still a little bit heavy on the beaker side. Right. Probably if I did 60 grams counterbalance here, it's a little bit too heavy. So again, you just wanna to go to the setting that just about made this zero. And then to get the ones position, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the dial for the rest of it here. So this one here looks like it's going to be 50 and a little bit here. Uh, this wheel here starts off with a zero, zero mark lined up. As I dial this wheel here, it steadily increases the mass on the right hand side here. This one here, looking at how far past I twist the wheel here past the zero mark, this would be one gram, two grams, three grams. And I've noticed that this scale here is really, it's counterbalanced too heavy. So it's going to be somewhere between 50 and maybe 51. Uh, it's pretty sensitive here, so I'm going to just rock this back and forth here. It's still a little bit too heavy. It's probably 50 and just a little bit. Okay. So we're going to assume when we read a diagram scale that the scale was calibrated to begin with, and then we're going to uh, counterbalance it as you do here. And then just talking about how do we actually read this mass. Uh, we know from the beam at the back here, we're not quite 100. We know we're at least 50 here. I look like I'm a little bit on the heavy side here. Uh, when this is lined up again here, I can make one last reading here. So let's dial it back. It's probably just a little bit over 50. Right. And then how we're going to read it here, the tens position, you can read directly from the second beam here. So it's going to be 50. Uh, right now, if it was at the 0, 0, it would be exactly 5, 0. If it was at the 1 here, it would be 5, 1. So I'm going to be 50. I'm going to take the 10 spaces here on the wheel itself to tell me my first decimal place. So, so far here, this would be 0 0.0. The one right over it would be 0.1. I am somewhere between 0 0.0 and 0.1. So, so far we have 50.0. Now, the second decimal place is the strange one. What they've done is they've actually done the second decimal place here along the back plate here. And what we're going to be looking for here is any of these markings here on the wheel that twist, which one of these markings here actually line up with the marking on the back side? There should be one that's directly across, while the others here are actually a little bit um, ajar, a little bit off. So if I line it up here, if you can uh, see close enough here, looks like maybe the second mark here is lined up straight across. So this random mark here on the wheel here is lined up with the back plate here. That actually tells me my mass on the back side. So I would conclude this is five, zero, 
0.02 as the mass. Because the second decimal place here is so strangely uh, calibrated for and trying to match up the lines here, even though you could technically do an error of plus or minus 0.005, usually I tell people, let's just go 0.01. If it would have fit in a smaller error bar here, it definitely will fit in a bigger error bar. Uh, if you make the error bar tiny, you should have good justification for that there. Right? So, so far I have my beaker here. I would record that uh, mass down. Uh, let's say my experiment here now calls for two grams worth of chemical. Uh, what we can do here is we can actually say, well, currently we know we're 50 grams. If you want two grams of chemical, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dial the masses first. I'm going to dial it until it's actually 52.02. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to steadily add my chemical, right? So as I add my chemical here, we had already calibrated it here for uh, two grams heavier. So I don't quite have two grams here in the beaker yet. I'm just going to keep... Uh, adding this to the beaker, and what we're doing here is sort of the reverse of what we did earlier. And again, all I want to do here is I want to match it up till my diagram scale here is calibrated again, when it's lined up again. So I'm probably just a little bit uh, under the two grams I wanted. I'm going to add a few extra grains there, and there we go. We've um, accounted for two grams worth in our diagram scale. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys.